it's very hard to compare kids in Rwanda with the kids in America. It's totally different. There is so much what the kids of Rwanda go through, which the kids in America don't go through. The, how, the house is made of mud. We, ha we make, they put together mud and they make small bricks. So that's what they use on the walls. And then on the floor, it's just dirt. The kids in Rwanda, it's really hard for them because I don't think here kids in America go to fetch water before they go to school. Do they? No. The kids in Rwanda, each kid has only one pair of uniform and they make sure they keep it clean. This is good. Mm -hmm. And they have to go to school with an empty stomach. I'm, I don't know if the kids here go to school with an empty stomach. It's really hard. I lived this life. I know how it feels. There's so many days I went to school without a meal. I love it. Hi. Welcome to America. Thank you. You're very welcome. Would you like a sample? I don't know what is I love apples so much because it's so hard to get them at home. You don't need to go in the garden to dig and wait for the harvesting time. I'm glad you're here. How long have you been here? Um, 12 days. 12 days? This is culture shock, isn't it? It is. It's amazing. I bet. Here in America, kids don't go to school without food. And they don't have one meal a day. We're going to be late! In Rwanda, kids walk a long distance from home to school. I still can't believe that you let him get front. He always gets front. I know some kids who walk a whole one hour to school and then another hour back home. By the time they get home, it's already dark. And they have to go to fetch water. They have to wash the dishes. They have to do homework on a candle, which someone is, like, is counting minutes for them to use because this candle is budgeted for a whole week. What these children do not have in material things, they more than make up for in spirit. And that enduring spirit inspires William and Cavini to make this long trip to and from school, as they have done for the last seven years. Their school is an oasis of hope, not far from the capital city of Kigali. Aptly named Hope Haven, Rwanda. Why the name Hope Haven, Rwanda? Well, I feel like it's a haven of hope. The kids are protected, it's a haven. So it's a haven of hope. Their families are protected, it's a haven of hope. So it's called Hope Haven, Rwanda. Before Hope Haven, Susan spent all of her time with her husband and children on their Colorado cattle ranch. She's a cowgirl, and she appeared to have it all. But she'll tell you, something was missing. My husband and I, we took our kids on a mission trip. And you know, it seems expensive. It seems like, you know, are you really accomplishing anything? But what it accomplished in me was it started building up this love for other people that I didn't even know. To me, she's a savior. I've been a Christian my whole life, but then I really wanted a deeper relationship. She transformed me. God purposes everyone in this world. We all have different purposes. And so you can only release those purposes into this world by giving people an opportunity. 
I always wanted a place where I can be a voice. And I did what I thought I could do to help, but frankly, it was really frustrating. But God started replacing my frustration with dreams of what could be, how to lift up the family, how to educate kids, how to do it well, how to do it with excellence. Just as she has done with every aspect of her life, especially her vision for Hope Haven. And here she comes with her dream of helping this community. I mean, when she employed me, it never felt like a job. This is the sentiment of each and every person involved at Hope Haven, who will tell you this is much more of a divine calling. God opened a way for me to speak for these kids. Here in Rwanda, on the outskirts of the capital city of Kigali. There wasn't a single school in probably a 15 mile radius. But that didn't stop founder Susan Holleran, who remembers early classes under this giant acacia tree. But what you have to imagine is not only did we have this tree, but all of this was bush. We had six foot tall grass. William and Kavini were there from the beginning. You were under the tree? Yes. Seven years ago? Yes. When we were under the tree, we were not very happy because it was not looking nice. And now the buildings are very big and there's no rain falling on us. But it took two years to build any buildings here. <laughs> Excitement is an understatement as local workers and parents of students join together for a common vision, a school, a community, a family. The last five years, we've erected 38,000 square feet. Every worker is from our immediate community. So they have learned bricklaying skills, They've learned cement skills, and they've learned roofing skills. All the skills that it takes to actually get a job somewhere else. That tree still stands at Hope Haven's entrance. A tribute to overcoming incredible odds, entering a society not accustomed to outsiders being there, let alone caring. What we found is that children would miss school. Nathan Kempton is the original director of Hope Haven. And we had no way of knowing what was happening to these children. If I see a child has missed two days, I go home and I talk to the parents. We would ask questions. We'd say, you know, where is, where's Rachel? I see why the child is not coming to school. We sit and talk about it. We find a solution. Since we've been in existence, we've had three children die that were our students, because nobody told us. And you're just like, why did somebody tell us this child was sick? And they would just say, well, we didn't think anybody cared. I want to know where this child is. Does this child need a, a lift to the hospital? Do we just need to get medication? What do we do to save this child? And we are happy that there is a big change, that we see children who came, who had jiggers, who couldn't walk with shoes, who could feel isolated. Today they love school and they enjoy being in the environment. It's our duty as Christians in this world, in Merindi, to take care of these people. We're all God's children. We're a family. We thought maybe 20 kids, maybe 10, would want to come under this tree because we didn't have anything to make us look like a school. We had parents lined up at the gate. Kids were under the tree. Then it was apparent that we needed a tent because it would start raining. By May, we had 97 children. And we've grown ever since. And it's the opportunity for these kids to have a future. If we don't teach, these kids will just be back in the fields like their mom and dad.
These children run to school every day. They love being here. They love the camaraderie. Also, we feed them. That was a lesson we learned early on in 2012. The kids were so hungry. They couldn't focus. Their heads were laying on the table. They were holding their stomachs. Their attention span wasn't there. They were, there was illness that would run rampant through the kids. So within a week or two, we actually started a porridge program. The next step was is teaching them about hygiene. The kids were sick. And so then we started looking at their hands and their hands were filthy. So we started hand washing. The kids would arrive, we'd line them up, they'd all wash their hands before they even went into school. The tree also symbolizes the future. Oh boy, now I'm really dreaming. <laughs> We're on our way to high school. I thought I would be done at sixth grade. That was gonna be a big accomplishment. Now we're gonna go to 12th grade. And of course, it serves as a constant reminder that even small seeds, when nurtured, can grow into greatness. I want to become a doctor. I want to be the, the manager of the World Bank. I wish to be a teacher when I grow up. And if national test scores are any indication, they'll be whatever they want to be. Because every student here taking that test scored in the top 3%, making Hope Haven the top performing school in all of Rwanda. <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay. <laughs> Can you believe it? I can't. You guys are the smartest cookies in the whole country. <laughs> cookies? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we are cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but smart cookies they are. Uh, thank you, Susan, for building this beautiful hope heaven. Thank you for treating us very well, and thank you for loving us, and we love you so much. I wanted to thank her for taking good care of us in this village and this town. I'm thanking her because you did a great job. And the winning recipe is exactly what you'd expect in any top performing school. Large, beautiful classrooms. A library. Dedicated teachers. We actually have teacher interviews here. There's a third party that comes in and helps conduct an interview. Watching what's going on in the classroom. We can have 20, 30, 25 or 30 people that we're, we've gotten down to the final interview and we haven't hired one. We start all over. If we don't have the great teachers that we want, willing to do the Hope Haven way, then we just simply start over. And then the other thing that we do to really reinforce learning, because teachers coming in, even though they're good teachers, they still don't know exactly what we're doing in the classrooms and how we're integrating other kinds of learning. So we always pair a teacher that has been at Hope Haven that has been trained by these different people who is learning and progressing, they are paired with another qualified teacher, not an intern, but a second qualified teacher. So we actually have two qualified teachers in a classroom of not more than 45 children. And the very latest technology. Plus things you don't often see, like healthcare, and delicious homegrown meals. These kids are eating rice and beans, but with the tomatoes from our garden, the dodo from our garden, the eggplant from our garden, zucchini from our garden, carrots from our garden, all these, you know, we're providing so much nutrition and it's fresh. So the parents have actually hoed the gardens, planted the gardens, watered the gardens, picked the food, and now they're serving it to their children in effect. I mean, how inspiring for them that they can actually provide for their children. And so I think it's really important, sure, Hope Haven provides these meals, but they feel like they're a very big part of what their children are getting. I have two girls in this school. I come here and do gigging and do something and get school fees for my children. And that's called dignity. To fully appreciate the significance of the school, you must understand the violent history of Rwanda. Just 25 years ago, the families of these children were aligned on either side of a mortal combat, a state-sponsored genocide where the ruling Hutus 
slaughtered nearly one million people of the Tutsi minority over a 100-day period. My father told me, everyone is dead. I don't have a family. You'll never see your grandmother. You'll never see your uncle. You'll never see your auntie. I lost everyone. So when we go back, you will also die. So my parents were refugees, and I was born as a refugee. I, I was raised in a refugee camp, and it was so hard to live in Uganda. And this is the hardest part about living in Uganda as a refugee, because when people were killing each other in Rwanda, the Hutus killing Tutsis, there is a river, it's called River Nyabarongo. It could carry dead bodies to Uganda. And when it carried dead bodies to Uganda, people stopped fishing. Fishing was banned in Uganda because the fish had injected, ingested uh, body parts of, of people. Miraculously, Rwandans now live together in peace and harmony in one of the most successful social reconciliations of all time. This supernatural story of forgiveness is what inspired Susan. It was really put on my heart to be a haven of hope for the community and the families, not just the kids. I raise a banner to the Lord and glorify God. He blessed us with someone to love and care for us. She didn't know us, but gave us everything to make our lives better. Because what happens, Stephanie, parents have died. So you have several generations of people that were raised as child parents. They raised younger siblings, not to mention just the abject poverty. It's really amazing and we are so happy that God has changed everything here and also changing the community. Where do you get all the money to do this, Susan? It's remarkable. That is private donations. I mean, I have to say I get nervous about it. But you know, the anxiety stops because we have a God of abundance. And many generous donors answering the call. The impact that we have here is bigger than any pact that we have in any other organization we work with. Brian and Christine Best have been supporting and visiting Hope Haven from the beginning. And despite all of the good they've done, they know there is so much more to do. She doesn't have a home. Her father is a drunkard who comes home once in a week or twice. That means this little girl always go home by herself and just finds herself in the house just alone. She had a little sister and the baby passed away because they didn't have anything to eat. They didn't have where to sleep. Everything was so hard for her. How do you process it? That's why we're here. Hope Haven is um, their hope. And it really truly is a haven because we, we just saw where she lives and um, no child should live that way. One way Susan hopes to grow her school is by asking people to invest in one child or more throughout their entire time here at Hope Haven, Rwanda to ensure their development and their destinies. For a cup of coffee a day, four dollars a day, we're educating the kids, serving them two meals. The parents are working during this earning and learning programs. We're paying for jobs. All of these things encompass the $4 a day. My heart is with that little girl. I plan to invest in her until she graduates. I want to come back and celebrate with her. I want to be a part of her life. And for Adelphine, this program this $4 a day means survival. Every day her life is changing and she has a smile on her face. <laughs> yeah, I am so grateful that uh, a lot of kids are living this life in our community, but every day Hope Heaven is bringing a change and transforming so many families in this community. I am so happy to see her growing because she's now living a promising future. Hope Heaven is saving her life and is still saving more kids in this community. So next time you're watching your kids do homework, remember William and all of the students at Hope Haven also doing their homework. 
under slightly different conditions. But dreaming just as big. I don't know if my dreams will come true, but I want to be a president. A what? A president. A president of Rwanda? Yes. Why wouldn't you be? You've got all the right stuff. <laughs> yeah. Who are we missing in this world? Who are we missing to poverty? Who are we missing to a lack of opportunity? We're all the same in Jesus' size. You know, just because somebody is poor doesn't mean they're dumb. I guarantee the kids are so much smarter than I am.